Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture we looked at uh, some regular packing and also saw that there are some non regular packing of course uh, regular packing are not uh, something that you would actually expect in a real material what you would expect is a non regular arrangement and for that we also saw that we can get relations something like number of particles per unit bulk volume and number of particle contacts per unit volume so these were obtained directly from regular structure but then these can also be extended the knowledge can be extended to non regular structure and even before i proceed further we have seen that there are two non regular packing we looked at was loose random packing and dense random packing however uh, if i tell you that for a sub micron alumina the rho that you get is of the order of 0.3 so what would your thought be we said that uh, usually you should get when you have not tapped it then 0.6 for the loose random packing when you have tapped it then it should be dense random packing close to 0.64 then why are we getting for sub micron alumina powders something like rho uh, this is again relative density so relative density equal to 0.3 then you have you have to remember that in the when the particle size reduces agglomeration tendency increases so this is because of agglomeration so agglomeration can change these values because in agglomeration particles will come together and they will not be so tightly packed and each agglomerate will itself be very loosely packed and uh, it will even if you get them to pack later on with a dense random packing the each of the agglomerate itself has very low density and so the average relative density would be very poor so now having said that now let's again look at uh, the nc value that is the coordinate the number of particle contacts per unit volume that we obtained so we saw that these are np is equal to 6 by pi d cube by pf now here everything we know can be obtained for even a non regular packing so this equation will will be retained even when we are talking about non regular structure our coordination number is not something that we can obtain for a non regular structure very easily and uh, some researchers have shown that coordination number can actually be given by under certain conditions like this so this is now Uh, equation or a relation that we can again utilize even for non regular packing so this is the coordination number and if we have the coordination number then we can also obtain number of contact points per unit volume which used coordination number by 12 by 2 and therefore this will come out to 3 by pf times 1 minus pf so this is uh, cn by 2 times np and uh, over here you would get the form of the relation would be like this so this is equal to cn uh, cn by 2 times np actually there is no cube over here so this should be uh, 3 pf by pi uh, so this is actually d cube d cube not uh, 1 minus pf cube so this is 3 pf by uh, d cube pi gets cancelled and uh, you also have this 1 minus pf factor so this is the relation for that is valid for non regular structure here because we don't know the coordination number so we Uh, obtained this coordination the uh, relation for coordination number was obtained by some researchers and they have given it like this in the 
in terms of P f which we can calculate or we can obtain and then we have N P and N C. These are some important parameters to understand how much densification is taking place. So, this is valid for non regular structures. So, now that we have introduced uh, some important uh, parameters which will be useful when we talk about densification. So, now let us uh, get to next step where we uh, so far we used just one mon or mono size uh, mono size spherical particles. Next we want to move on to a um, pi model distribution of particles and see how much density or how much packing fraction we can get. Other once you have obtained the packing fraction then you know we can obtain other important parameters like number of particles per unit volume and number of contacts per unit volume. So, now we will move to the next stage which is to find out what will be the packing fraction or at least the apparent packing fraction when you have bimodal distribution. What do you mean by the bimodal distribution? Ideally, it would mean that you have two distinct diameter and a spread around it. So, something like this if I were to draw it uh, So, here you have diameter and here you have frequency. So, this is one diameter, this is another diameter, but in our case we are making the case, making things even more simpler and we are saying we have only diameter only di particles of this diameter and particles of this diameter. We do not have we are not considering even a distribution, we have particles only of exactly two diameters and to further make things. Uh, tractable or so that we can formulate relations around it, we will assume that d fine is less than or let us say d course is greater than 10 times of d fine. So, our course diameter particles are at least 10 times that of uh, fine size particles and we will see where this fits in. So, now we have to uh, put it like this we have two particles let us say 1 d we will call d course and another small particle we will call d fine and one if it is getting arranged in some particular uh, arrangement then we will say array assume that it has a packing fraction which is constant given by p f c and when this is getting arranged in some fashion we will assume it is constant meaning it is not changing from one point to another and this is p f fine. So, now that we have here we will have two extreme cases. So, let me write it one when we add small particles to coarse particles, meaning coarse particles are already arranged or already sitting inside a jar and you pour in fine particles. So, ok let to be again consistent let me use fine instead of small. So, add fine particles to coarse particles. Now, what is happening over here? So, again the way I have drawn it, uh, it is not really representative, let me make it even smaller, in fact it will even be smaller and therefore, what we have is something like this. So, let us say there are particles arranged, there will always be some tetrahedral or triangular pore kind of structure formed over here. And this, uh, like I said, the drawing that I have shown here is a little exaggerated. The particle size would be even smaller than this. So, let us say this is our small particle size.
So, this is our and this is our coarse particles. What we see is that when you are adding the fine particles to the coarse particles, the fine particles are taking the pores, they are not displacing the larger particles. It means the overall volume, the empty volume is getting reduced or the pore volumes is getting reduced and therefore, the packing fraction must overall increase. Now, let us say we have, <coughs> let us define some of the terms. So, total volume is equal to V t, meaning it includes the particle volume by the large particles, by the coarse particles, uh, sorry the coarse particles, the fine particles and the pore. So, this is uh, fine plus coarse plus pores, everything included is our total volume. Then we have mass of the coarse particle. meaning we are now only considering the mass masses of the coarse particles. Similarly, you will have mass for the fine particles So, you will have masses of the fine particle and corresponding to that there will be a V c corresponding to that meaning volume of the coarse particles corresponding to this there will be a fine particle volume which is V f. And remember V c plus V f is not equal to 1, because there is still some pores. So, V c plus V f plus V pore is equal to uh, 1 or 2 V total, not 1 here, we are not looking at ratio. So, V c plus V f plus V pore is equal to V t. And we let me also define true density, meaning what is the bulk density. So, we will use the term rho t. And therefore, if you were to take m c by v c, it will be equal to rho t true density, because we are looking only at the masses of the coarse particle and only the volume occupied by the coarse particle. So, this is the true density. If we take m f by v f, that will be the true density, because we are talking about masses uh, of the fine particles and only the volume taken by the fine particles. However, if we take m c by v t, then that is low density, lower than rho t, because now we are talk, taking about whole volume, which includes if it uh, if there is no fine particle, then it includes the coarse particle plus the pores between the coarse particle, that volume. So, mass by V t. So, that uh, density is smaller and that will be you can say the rho, uh, rho c or the coarse density. Now, let us move on and try to look at how to get the uh, apparent density for this. So, the apparent density can be What do we mean by apparent density? Meaning the total mass that we have for the coarse and the fine and the total volume, which is uh, volume coarse, volume fine plus volume pore. We are not uh, dividing it by only the volume core plus volume fine, because that will be equal to the true density. We want average or relative density with respect to the bulk density, because pores are got, have got included and that is what is making a lot of difference. So, this is what we are interested in, which is going to be give us the rho apparent and this will be equal to we can write it as m c by v c times v c by v t plus m f by v f into V f by V t. So, we have just multiplied it by V c by V c, this one by multiplied by V f by V f. So, m f by V f, we know what it is, it is rho true, m c by V c, we know what it is, it is rho true and V c by V t, we know it is equal to, okay, let it, uh, we will let it be like this for now. So, we have rho true in both of them and I have shortened from apparent to a p p or we will even make it to rho a 
so this is rho a by rho t times v c by v t plus v f by v t, but again here what we will do is we will take v f or multiply it by v t minus v c, you will see in a moment why we have done this. So, we have multiplied it on both sides. Now, V c by V t, what it is? It is nothing but packing fraction of course. We are looking at the volume taken by the course particles and the total volume. So, that is the packing fraction of course. We, here, we are looking at the volume taken by the fine particles and the pores that were available to them overall which is V t minus V c. So, the overall pore that were available after taking on to taking away the coarse particles. So, this again represents P f fine and that is why we multiply it in the numerator and denominator by this quantity V t minus V c. Now, over here we have again V t minus V c by V t which is equal to 1 minus V c by V t and we know V c by V t is again P f c. So, this becomes 1 minus P f course and what is this rho apparent by rho t? You can see that this can be written as, so this is mass by density. So, let us say this is m c plus m f which will get cancelled anyhow and this is by the v t, this is again v m c plus m f, but here we are only looking at the volume of coarse plus volume of fine. So, this translates to V c plus V f by V t. Now, this is nothing but this is equal to our rho uh, packing fraction apparent. This is you can say the overall average packing fraction of this material, because these are the volumes which have been occupied by the particles, but this was the total volume available. So, that is what represents the packing fraction. So, this is the apparent packing fraction. Times So, we have now a relation for the apparent packing fraction when we have two particle size, two diameters. One is uh, the coarse one and another one is fine one and based on that we have a packing fraction apparent which is equal to which can be given in terms of packing fraction coarse plus packing fraction fine times 1 minus packing fraction coarse. So, this is if you put the values for example, let us assume that both coarse and fine packed in FCC kind of uh, face centered cubic type of structure just for the sake of argument we are saying this and therefore, if you put this uh, value which is equal to 0.74. So, pa both packing fraction coarse and packing fraction fine will become 0.74 and when you put it over here you would see that packing fraction apparent is equal to 0.932. This is just one example here you could have any other arrangement for coarse and any other arrangement for fine. You could as well have this as loose random packing, coarse random packing or both of them simple packing or anything in between. You can just say or you, you know for example, from your experiment that your coarse particles are get arranged and have a packing fraction of 0.4 and fine particles have a packing fraction of 0.35. So, you will again be able to put those values over here to get to or to understand what would be the overall packing fraction. So, that is one extreme case when we have added fine particles to the coarse particles. Now, next let us move to the other extreme which is we this time we will add fine uh, sorry the coarse particles to the fine particles and why will it be different you will see in a moment. It will be treated or you will have to treat it differently. So, we will add coarse fine. Okay. So, we are not saying 
or uh, basically what we are doing over here is that this time all the smaller particles are already arranged in somewhere in some place. Okay. Now, you know that fine particles the sorry the coarse particles cannot cannot go in pores right they must displace so that is the important part they must displace earlier we did not have any displacement must displace fine particles So, that is what makes it different here you must here the coarse particles cannot get into the pores they must displace the, fi the fine particles and then come over there. So, for example, here we were drawing like this now let me say there is a big region like this and when the coarse particle comes over here it will take this region and around it the fine particles would still exist. And so on. So, again you can see that when we displace the fine particles by the coarse particles, there is an increase in the packing fraction, because in this region now the whatever pores were there they have disappeared now it has been displaced by a bulk material. Another difference here with respect to the previous case that we saw is that in the previous case we assumed that all the pores because they are the fine particles are going into the pores we assumed that all the fine all the pores would be taken by fine particles, but here we have a coarse particle displacing the fine particles. So, we are not assuming that it will go it, it will taste uh, it will fill all the places and therefore, we will have to assume some fraction. So, let us say x c equal to v c by v t is the fraction of coarse particle in the overall volume meaning this much fraction in the total volume has been replaced by the coarse particles by and another thing is that this is not equal to packing fraction of course in the previous case where we assumed that the overall coarse volume were uh, fully packed uh, the coarse particle were fully packed in the volume then over there vc by vt would have meant packing fraction but here some random places to begin with will be occupied by the coarse particles and therefore, that V c by V t does not represent packing fraction. So, you must be aware that this is not packing fraction, this just represents a section or the a fraction of the volume of the total volume which has been taken by coarse particles. So, continuing with this initially when x c is equal to 0, we can say that v occupied by v total is equal to uh, we saw that rho apparent by rho total is rho sorry rho true is equivalent to saying v occupied by v total and this was this would be equal to packing fraction fine, because initially we are saying x is equal to 0, which means there is no coarse uh, there is no coarse particle only fine particles. So, if we are looking at the initial stage where x is equal to 0, then v uh, uh, the packing fraction apparent which is equal to v occupied by total volume is equal to rho apparent by rho total is equal to packing fraction fine. Now, this would also imply that rho apparent is equal to packing fraction fine times rho true. 
now replace x c fraction of volume by large particles. Okay, so, this at this stage we had only fine particles, now we are saying x c volume which is uh, v c by v t amount is being replaced by large particles. So, he can say that rho apparent will be equal to this will be increased by how much? Let me just put a line over here. We are replacing those regions by the large particles which means whatever porosity there existed does not exist anymore. It is now a bulk material with bulk density. So, it will increase by So, this is the amount of pores that have been filled and therefore, this is the increase in the rho apparent. Another way we can also look at it in a another way. So, let me uh, write it over here. I will keep the lower equation, so that we can compare it with the new equation that we will obtain. The another way to look at it would be let us say V occupied by V total is what we were looking at. So, this is V f plus V c So, initially when there were no coarse particles this would have been V fine by uh, to be again I was using small f. So, let me continue with the small f. So, initially it would have been V f by V t, but now some of that region we said x, uh, the x c volume has been replaced by coarse particle. So, that replacement is represented by this volume. So, this is again the volume which has been occupied V c times 1 minus P f f. It is uh, the amount of volume which has been replaced has the packing fraction 1. Initially, it we were counting it as packing fraction f. So, the difference has been added 1 minus p f times v c which is the volume which has been replaced and therefore, this represents again the rho apparent v occupied by v t is the rho apparent and therefore, we have rho uh, we can say that p f a let me is equal to p f fine. So, these two are equation as you can see are same what all we are doing is taking rho t to the denominator because rho t is common on both of them and we are left with rho a by rho t which is equal to p f apparent and therefore, this becomes p f a plus x c 1 minus p f fine. So, this represents the apparent packing fraction when we are replacing the larger particle the smaller particles by the larger particles finer particles have been moved. So, when we move when we do like this that is there were some very fine particles and in uh, in that we have replaced by a bulk it is uh, it as good as a bulk and uh, here is the size. So, this these are the coarse particles this have these have come in place of this region and around it you still have those fine particles as we had earlier and in that case you will get p f apparent equal to this. And uh, two main important difference between these are one over here you see that x c is present or x c is a factor which is a variable. So, we are looking at it as a function or as a uh, function of how much fraction has been replaced. You remember we said not all the region can be packed with coarse particle unlike in the previous one. In the previous one the fine particles were going in the pores and therefore, we could have easily we can easily 
say that all the pores are filled and therefore, there is a constant relation meaning it is talking about the maximum or the point where maximum uh, packing has taken place. Coarse particles are completely packed and all the pores are packed by fine particles it is representing that condition. We can even look for a condition where that is not the case or where it is varying where some amount of uh, pores have been filled then again some more amount of uh, pores have been filled and finally, when all the pores have been filled. So, that will be the reason and we can also get a relation uh, with variable amount of fine particles, but this uh, inherently this equation inherently has a x e which shows how this uh, relation varies with the fraction of the particles or the volume which have been exchanged by the coarse particles. So, that is these are the two main differences next time what we will do is we will try to or we will show how to plot this no, not how to basically how it will look like when you plot this as a function of uh, coarse particles in the total volume or as a function of fine particles in the total volume. And we have to be careful when we draw when we make that plot if you do it as a function of uh, let us say volume by total volume then it will be very different from what you from what you should see when you draw it as a function of let us say volume of uh, Vc by Vc plus Vf those two would be very different. So, we will look at that uh, plot in the next lecture. So, we will come back on this slide thanks. Mm -hmm.